Good morning and uh, welcome again from the Salvation Army at East Toronto. It's a beautiful day here in Toronto today. Uh, we're glad that you've joined us. In the background here, I'll step aside for a moment. Uh, you will see the playground. There's a school. Uh, every morning, afternoon, you'll see lots of children, lots of energy, lots of laughter, and the children just enjoy being together. But unfortunately, uh, due to further restrictions in the province, particularly in Toronto, our school systems have been closed yet again. Uh, we do think of our children and uh, parents and the struggle that they have at this moment, uh, the confusion and the weariness that settles in, uh, but we know it's necessary to keep our children safe, to keep uh, parents, grandparents, uh, keep all of us safe, and we'll get through this. Of course, our greatest defense is to follow the protocols uh, and to get that vaccine. And I pray that uh, either you have it, or you've signed up for it, or you will be signing up, uh, because that's the way that we can defeat uh, this terrible COVID uh, virus that seems to uh, have us locked down too many times. But we'll get there for sure. Now let me just share with you uh, some words from the scripture as our call to worship. And in the scripture is also the prayer this morning. And it's from Psalm 71, selected verses. You have been my hope, Sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. As for me, I will always hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long, though I know not how to relate to them all. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, Sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I, when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who come to me. I will praise you for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing to you, Holy One. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, I whom you have delivered. Amen. Amen. Join us for worship. May God bless you as you do.
Good morning. Um, I would like to invite you to um, <clears throat> turn in your Bible to John 20, verses 24 to 31. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by leaving, believing, you may have life in his name. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Hello everyone. I'm going to be singing a song to thank God for the salvation of life, for keeping me alive and my family during this pandemic as you listen me with breath. Thank you. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. He is Lord. Never knew shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. So glorious in your name. 
They sit down, they write them down, and for many Canadians, this is undoubtedly a very difficult task. But for Americans, it is just as tough. Very few can actually name all 50. In fact, I've tried it, and I got about 40 out of the 50 in the 10 minutes. I know many Americans who would also find it very difficult to name the 10 provinces and three territories of Canada. And it may also be very difficult for Canadians themselves. But for Christians, we have many different things in which we like to memorize as well. There are the 66 books of the Bible, or you can separate them down into the 27 of the new and the 39 of the old. Or maybe just you try and name all the prophets. Then there's also the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, that one's a little bit more difficult because if you take the tribe of Joseph, often it's split up into the tribe of Manasseh and Ephraim. So there's actually 13. But then we have the really fun one. 
Name the 12 disciples. Of course, you have the big three, Peter, James, and John. And then you have Matthew, Judas, and Andrew, Peter's brother. So that's six. And then you have the lesser ones that you don't really hear about that often. You have Philip, you have Thaddeus, you have Bartholomew, then you have the other Simon and the other James. However, none of these disciples comes with a full disclaimer on their name like our final one. Yes, you may have Judas the betrayer, or you have John the Beloved, but we rarely call them these names when we're talking about them. However, our 12th disciple has a name that comes with a disclaimer in which many people will call him this, and that is Doubting Thomas. How would you like it if after two millennia, you, following your leaving the earth, people still remember one simple conversation you had in which you questioned what your friends were telling you and labeled you this for the rest of eternity? I think Thomas gets a bad reputation, and frankly, I believe it's unwarranted. And we're going to explore that idea here this, today. When we look to the key reason that he gets this title, it comes from the section that we read this morning in the second half of verse 25. It says, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Yes, in this moment, he is doubting what the other disciples are telling him. But let's, for a minute, go back to chapter 4 and verse 48, during a meal, miracle in which I preached earlier in this uh, wander through John and his miracles. And Jesus is healing the official son. When the royal official and probably others are surrounding Jesus, Jesus says this, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Jesus knew this to be a fact for many. It wasn't as easy as just believing in who he was. Even as Jesus argues with the leaders in chapter 10, verse 37 and 38 of John, he says, do not believe me unless I do the works of my Father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Jesus knew that there would be many that would find it difficult to follow him without evidence of that claim. There is also another bit of evidence in which proof is existing that G Thomas actually gets the short end of the stick. And I'll be honest, I missed it for the number of times that I've read through this or that I've heard this section of scripture. If we simply go back five verses to verse 19 of this chapter, chapter 20, we read why Thomas made this request in the first place. Jesus appeared to the disciples on that first Sunday, but Thomas wasn't present. And what does it say in verse 20? After he, Jesus, said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. The disciples told Thomas that they had seen these things. They saw his hands. They saw his side. That's why Thomas is making this request. He missed out. And yes, he's questioning what they are saying. But he just wants to experience for himself what the others just had happened to them. I think 
We have many Thomases in our lives. People who have been around the church or have church influences in their lives but just won't engage in the celebration that we experienced last week. They just can't engage because they question the truths they are told. Many of us may have even written them off as outsiders because they just don't have faith. What if all they need is to experience Jesus in a tangible way? What if faith doesn't come to them the way that it does to others? For many of us, we forget that we didn't have faith at one time. Maybe you were raised in the church and from an early age, of five or six, you understood who this Jesus person was and what he did for you. And that is an amazing thing. Jesus blesses you right here in this section with the verse, blessed are those who have see not seen and yet believed. Sure, we may never see the physical manifestation of Jesus walking the earth, but how cool would that be? But some still need that tangible evidence. The other disciples had that evidence presented to them. Thomas didn't. They did not believe without sight either. We are never entirely told whether Thomas got all that he asked for. In fact, I believe he didn't. He asked to place his hands in the marks, but upon seeing them, he proclaimed, my Lord and my God. Jesus gave him what he needed in order to believe. It is a confession of Thomas's heart heartfelt belief in Jesus. Thus, we learn that the most outrageous doubter of the resurrection of Jesus utters the greatest confession of the Lord who rose from the dead. It is true that Thomas might have missed out on the blessing that is proclaimed on those who believe without seeing, but this does not cost him his salvation. For those who believe without seeing, maybe that blessing is as, as simple as going through the agony of not realizing the comfort that comes with relying on God in times of trials without that tangible evidence. Jesus does not disparage the faith of Thomas saying, so now you believe because you have seen but simply cites the fact, because you have seen me, you have believed. Thomas's faith is anchored in his sight. Thomas's faith is not necessarily blemished because of his need for sight. It is simply privileged for a few who would ever have the gift of what the disciples experienced. Maybe you have those times when you question your faith. When you question your faith because of your doubt. The fact that you are still engaging, the fact that you are still asking questions means God is still working. Don't stop believing, even when faith becomes hard. Keep asking God to show you, and he will. Maybe it won't be in the same way that you expect, but he will show himself. 
And for those of us, when our words are not enough for those around us who are questioning, let us be the action. Showing who Jesus is. We are his representatives. He is calling on us to be the example of who he truly is. When someone is looking for Jesus, may he be found in the world around us, in the miracles that he performs daily. But most importantly, may he be found in our actions day by day. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, sometimes when we look at people and as they follow you, they question what's going on. I'll even be the first one to admit that I've had times where I've said sometimes asking questions is the lack of faith. But God, you know who we are. You know that we are a fallible people. That sometimes doubt creeps in. 
And yes, how wonderful would it be to have unquestioned faith that nothing that could ever happen would ever waver us from following you. And if that is the case for any of your believers, thank you for that. But for others, the world just creeps into our minds. It becomes an influence. And Lord, continue to work through us. Continue to work on us. That when even when doubt comes in, we still lean upon you. And when we experience those around us who do not have the faith to believe because of those questions, let us continue to be your hands and your feet in their lives. Because one action that we have could be your hands and your side to them. That you show up in their lives. God, let us be your representatives. But most importantly, continue to be in our lives as we walk this journey with you. Lord, be with us as we continue. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us conclude our time together in worship and song.
God has spoken into our hearts and into our minds this morning through the music, through his word. And let me leave you with this benediction this morning. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes. The love of God be reflected in your hands. The wisdom of God be reflected in your words. And the knowledge of God flow from your heart that all might see and seeing believe. Amen. God bless you. Stay safe and have a wonderful day.